Fantastic Mr Fox by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake. Chapter 1. The Three Farmers Down in the valley there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. They were rich men. They were also nasty men. All three of them were about as nasty and mean as any men you could meet. Their names were Farmer Bogus, Farmer Bunce and Farmer Bean. Bogus was a chicken farmer. He kept thousands of chickens. He was enormously fat. This was because he ate three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast, lunch and supper. Bunce was a duck and goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. He was so short his chin would have been underwater in the shallow end of any swimming pool in the world. His food was doughnuts and goose livers. He mashed the livers into a disgusting paste and then stuffed the paste into the doughnuts. This diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. He kept thousands of turkeys in an orchard full of apple trees. He never ate any food at all. Instead, he drank gallons of strong cider, which he made from the apples in his orchard. He was as thin as a pencil and the cleverest of them all. Bogus and Dunce and Bean, one fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were nonetheless equally mean. That is what the children round about used to sing when they saw them. Chapter 2 Mr Fox On a hill above the valley there was a wood. In the wood there was a huge tree. Under the tree there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr Fox and Mrs Fox and their small, four small foxes. Every evening, as soon as it was getting dark, Mr Fox would say to Mrs Fox, Well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plunk chicken from Bogus, a duck or a goose from Bounce, or a nice turkey from Bean? And when Mrs Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr Fox would creep down into the valley in the darkness of the night and help himself. Bogus and Bounce and Bean knew very well what was going on and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away. Less still did they like anything to be stolen from them. So every night each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on his own farm, hoping to catch the robber. But Mr Fox was too clever for them. He always approached a farm in the wind blowing in his face, and this meant that if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the smell of that man to Mr Fox's nose from far away. Thus, if Mr Bogus was hiding behind his chicken house number one, Mr Fox would smell him out from fifty paces from fifty yards off and quickly change direction, heading for chicken house number four at the other end of the farm. Dang and blast that lousy beast, cried Bogus. I'd like to rip his guts out, said Bunce. He must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Bogus, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Bean picked his nose, delicate with Lee with a long finger. I have a plan, he said. You've never had a decent plan yet, said Bounce. Shut up and listen, said Bean. Tomorrow night we will all hide just outside the hole where the fox lives. We will wait there until he comes out. 
Then bang, 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 bang. Very clever, said Bunce. But first we shall have to find the hole. My dear Bunce, I've already found it, said the crafty bean. It's up in the wood on the hill. It's under a huge tree. Chapter 3 The Shooting Well, my darling, said Mr Fox, what shall it be tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs Fox. Bring us two fat ducks, if you please. One for you and me, and one for the children. Ducks it shall be, said Mr Fox. Bounces best. Now do be careful, said Mrs Fox. My darling, said Mr Fox, I can smell those goons a mile away. I can even smell one from the other. Bogus gives off a filthy stink of rotten ch chicken skins. Bounce reeks of goose livers. And as for Bean, the fumes of apple cider hung, ar hung around him like poisonous gases. Yes, but just don't get careless, said Mrs Fox. You know they'll be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't you worry about me, said Mr Fox. I'll see you later. But Mr Fox would not have been quite so cocky had he known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. They were just outside the entrance to the hole, each one crouching behind a tree with his gun loaded. And what is more, they had chosen their positions very carefully, making sure that the wind was not blowing from them towards the fox's hole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. There was no chance of them being smelled out. Mr Fox crept up the dark tunnel to the mouth of his hole. He poked his long, handsome face out into the night air and sniffed once. He moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. He was always especially careful when coming out from his hole. He inched forward a little more. The front half of his body was now in the open, his black nose twitching from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger. He found none, and he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when he heard, or thought he heard, a tiny noise, a soft rustling sound, as though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves. Mr Fox flattened his body against the ground and lay very still, his ears pricked. He waited a long time, but he heard nothing more. It must have been a field mouse, he told himself, or some other small animal. He crept a little further out of the hole, then further still. He was almost right out in the open now. He took a last, careful look around. The wood was murky and very still. Somewhere in the sky the moon was shining. Just then his sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree not far away. It was a small silver speck of moonlight shining on a polished surface. Mr Fox lay still watching it. What on earth was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens! It was the barrel of a gun. Quick as a whip, Mr Fox jumped back into his hole and at that same instant the entire wood seemed to explode around him. Bang, bang! Bang, 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 bang! The smoke from the three guns floated upward in the night air. Bogus and Bounce and Bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole. Did we get him? said Bean. One of them shone a fat flashlight on the hole, and there on the ground, in the circle of light, half in and half out of the hole, lay the poor, tattered, blood-stained remains of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. We got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing the thing away. Dang and blast, said Bogus. We shot too late. We should have let 
fly the moment he poked his head out. He won't be poking it out again in a hurry, Bounce said. Bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider. Then he said, I'll take three days at least. It'll take three days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again. I'm not sitting around here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ah, said Bogus, now you're talking sense. We can dig him out in a couple of hours. We know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down that hole, Bounce said. Then we'll have the lot, said Bean. Get the shovels. Chapter 4 The Terrible Shovels Down the hole, Mrs Fox was tenderly licking the stump of Mr Fox's tail to stop the bleeding. It was the finest tail from miles around, she said between licks. It hurts, said Mr Fox. I know it does, sweetheart, but it'll soon get better, and it will soon grow again. Dad, said one of the small foxes. It will never grow again, said Mr Fox. I shall be tailless for the rest of my life. He looked very glum. There was no food for the foxes that night, and soon the children dozed off. Then Mrs Fox dozed off. But Mr Fox couldn't sleep because of the pain in the stump of his tail. Well, he thought, I suppose I'm lucky to be alive at all. And now they found our hole, we're going to have to move out as soon as possible. We'll never get any peace if we... What was that? He turned his head sharply and listened. The noise he heard now was the most frightening noise a fox can ever hear. The scrape, scrape, scraping of shovels digging into the hole, into the soil. Wake up, he shouted. They're digging us out. Mrs. Fox was wide awake in one second. She sat up, quivering all over. Are you sure that's it, she whispered. I'm positive. Listen. They'll kill my children, cried Mrs. Fox. Never, said Mr. Fox. But darling, they will, sobbed Mrs. Fox. You know they will. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch went the shovels above their heads. Small stones and bits of earth began falling from the roof of the tunnel. How will they kill us, Mummy? asked one of the small foxes. His round black eyes were huge with fright. Will there be dogs, he said. Mrs. Fox began to cry. She gathered her four children close to her and held them tight. Suddenly there was an especially loud crunch above their heads and the sharp end of a shovel came right through the ceiling. The sight of this awful thing seemed to have an electric effect upon Mr Fox. He jumped up and shouted, I've got it! Come on! There's not a moment to lose! Why didn't I think of it before? Think of what, Dad? A fox can dig quicker than a man, shouted Mr Fox, beginning to dig. Nobody in the world can dig as quick as a fox. The soil began to fly out furiously behind Mr Fox as he started to dig for dear life with his front feet. Mrs Fox ran forward to help him. She So did the four children. Go downwards, ordered Mr Fox. We've got to go deep, as deep as we possibly can. The tunnel began to grow longer and longer. It sloped steeply downward. Deeper and deeper below the surface of the ground it went. The mother and the father and all four of the children were digging together. Their front legs were moving so fast you couldn't see them and gradually the scrunching and the scraping of the shovels became fainter and fainter. After about an hour, Mr Fox stopped digging. Hold it, he said. They all stopped. They turned and looked back up the long tunnel they had just dug. All was quiet. Whew, said Mr Fox. I think we've done it. They'll never get as deep as this. Well done, everybody. Well done, everyone. They all sat down, panting for breath. And Mrs Fox said to her children, I should like you to know that if it wasn't for your father, we should all be dead by now. Your father is a fantastic fox. 
Mr Fox looked at his wife and she smiled. He loved her more than ever when she said things like that. Chapter 5 The Terrible Tractors As the sun rose the next morning, Bogus and Bunce and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it, but they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and cross. Dang and blast, said Bogus. Those rotten, whose rotten idea was this? Bean's idea, said Bunce. Bogus and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily. I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in till I've strung him up over my front porch, dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure, said the fat bogus. I've had enough of digging. Bunce, the little pot-bellied dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, Have you got any more stupid ideas then? What, said Bean. I can't hear you, Bean never took a bath. He never even washed. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that. This made him deaf. Speak louder, he said to Bunce, and Bunce shouted back, Got any more stupid ideas? Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming there, and it itched. What we need on this job, he said, is machines, mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. This was a pretty good idea, and the other two had to admit it. All right then, Bean said, taking charge. Bogus, you stay here and see the fox doesn't escape. Bunce and I will go and fetch our machinery. If he tries to get out, shoot him quick. The long, thin bean walked away. The tiny bunce trotted after him. The fat bogus stayed where he was with his gun pointed at the foxhole. Soon two enormous caterpillar trucks uh, Soon two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends, came clunking into the wood. Bean was driving one, Bunce the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal-looking monsters. Here we go, then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides rocks were sent flying and trees were falling and the noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes, our tunnels got shorter. I can see daylight. They all looked around, and yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now. The two huge black tractors almost on top of them. Tractors, shouted Mr Fox, and mechanical shovels. Dig for your lives! Dig, dig, dig!